night with an issue that's reaching epidemic proportions in Australia. Food poisoning is something that affects more than five million of us each year and some cases are lethal. Well now authorities are determined to bring it under control. Tim Noonan joins the food inspectors waging war on the worst offenders. Still quite shocked and horrified to what I find. This one is a pizza that had been purchased and the complainant found a cockroach that's actually been baked in to the pizza. Here we have a rusty cement mixer that's being used to marinate squid. Forget Gordon Ramsay and celebrity cooking shows. This is what happens behind closed doors. What's happening to the duck? Food safety is extremely serious. It's deadly serious. There's feces here inside the slicer. We've actually um, have come across people shelling prawns sitting on the toilet. They'll get caught. Restaurants and butchers, tens of thousands of them, where food in the wrong hands is a deadly mix. It can cause permanent damage, it can kill people. It's a danger, it's a clear danger. They will be fined tens of thousands of dollars. We can close businesses down immediately. Random raids by teams of food police are the only thing that's keeping us safe. We don't um, announce that we're coming. Christine Tumney is at the front line of the war on filthy food. Christine from the Food Authority. She heads up an elite team of 50 inspectors who investigate the most extreme cases. What are you going to the back of They strike without warning to catch the worst operators red-handed. You see there's mouth droppings up the back there. That's vermin feces on the floor. We've got a number of flies that are flying around here that shouldn't be here. There's a lot of meat on the floor at the moment. Today, Heng the Butcher is back in their sights. It's really important that you keep your, keep your slicer very clean. Some cigarette ash here. There's feces here inside the slicer. He's been inspected several times before. The business didn't look too bad, um, just from the front counter area. But then we went around the back and found that um, the cleanliness and hygiene of the premises actually deteriorated as you went further into the back processing areas of the business. Um, and then we found some quite um, disturbing areas in the very back area where we found evidence of, of rats and mice on the premises. Do you understand how important it is that you don't have any mice or rats on your premises? I mean, that this then can relate to contamination of your food products or some of your dry ingredients. Heng now faces a breach of the Food Standards Code. The maximum penalty, $55,000. We looked after a fast food establishment in Sydney where we killed 1,500 rats in 18 months. Pest controller Peter Lamont has been exterminating vermin for 35 years. I've seen undesirable levels of pest activity from the corner takeaway shop up to the five-star hotels in town. So prestige and affluence is no protection against pest activity, I'm afraid. Yeah, we're at the back of a um, takeaway shop. What we have found out in the back here is um, live cockroaches. Last year, the Food Authority issued almost 1,300 improvement notices in New South Wales alone. Theoretically, to sell off with five mature female cockroaches on the 1st of January, by the end of the year, they can have 300 million offspring. If you go and eat in a restaurant or buy food from a food outlet, you expect that to be of the highest standard and not challenge your health or threaten your health. I saw her put that tray back there, yep. The quality of Heng's meat has suddenly caught Christine's attention. It looks like they're doping the mints to make it look fresher than it actually is. If they're illegally adding preservatives, then they're corrupt. Do you add anything to it? Yeah, only little bits, three on the top. It's pre mix, isn't it? Yeah. Sulfur dioxide is a chemical illegally added to red and old mincemeat that should be in the bin. It reacts with uh, sulfur dioxide, it'll disappear. Not only can it trigger severe allergic reactions, for some, it can be fatal. Okay, if you're selling it as pork mince, you cannot add anything to it. That's another potential breach. $55,000 again. 
So I'm just taking um, a temperature of the meat that's on display here. There are regulations that say that meat must be held below 5 degrees. It's a regulation. So it's double as warm as it should be? Correct. This is 10.4 or 10.2. Top's like over 10 degrees and the bottom's frozen. I found products of 10.6 and 11.6 degrees for those products. Now that's a double what it should be. If you have food in the danger zone between 5 and 60 degrees, you've got a window of about 6 hours and then the food has to be chucked out. Keeping meat at the wrong temperature can also be hit with a $55,000 fine. Give them half an hour in the cool room. All up, and that's $150,000 worth of potential fines. You can fit one million bacteria on the head of a pin. That's how small they are. So one speck of unsafe food can have one million pathogenic bacteria. It's a bacteria with a deadly sting, the cause of Australia's worst food poisoning epidemic. A four-year-old girl has died and 11 children are still in hospital. People, many of them children, suffered serious kidney damage and other injuries in late night. One slice of that contaminated salami shut down Nick Pascal's vital organs. Then it made me sick to my stomach and made me angry because then I started to see that this wasn't an accident. <laughs> 14 years on, Nick still lives on a cocktail of medication. He now needs a double transplant, one for his kidney, the other for his pancreas. But the reality is that sometimes they don't work, sometimes they don't last 15 years, and even if they do, he's only just turning 16 this year. If he gets 15, that's only taking him to 30. There are 40,000 restaurants in Australia, and keeping them honest is never ending. Best One Barbecue is a serial offender. That's very dirty in there, that needs to be cleaned out. So the storage of there, that's not acceptable to have that like that. You need the water to be running. For a restaurant or a food business to keep offending, it's a crime. What's the pumpkins doing down there, the food? For rubbish bin. No, they're not for rubbish bin, they were stored over there when we came in. Food poisoning costs Australia $1.2 billion a year. And that's a bill authorities refuse to swallow anymore. So some people, the small minority, um, are running the gauntlet and so they could they'll find themselves getting caught and they'll face the consequences. And there's a growing call for all states to join that name and shame website for offending food outlets because at the moment it's only required in New South Wales.